Uh, good morning, friends. Uh, it's the 5th of September and it's the start of spring here in New Zealand. Uh, I'm inside my greenhouse, my happy place. And today I'll be talking about my favorite plant, uh, the Cymbidium orchids. You know, it's one of the genera of, of the orchid family, along with Phalaenopsis and Vanda and Cattleya and Dendrobium. But I have taken fancy on these plants. Uh, because of three reasons. Number one, the cymbidiums give a variety of beautiful blooms. And number two, the blooms last for a few months. And the third one, uh, these plants are not very fussy. That means they adapt to a wide range of conditions and can be grown outside or inside the house, especially when they are blooming. So today I'll be talking about uh, how to take care of these uh, cymbidium plants, how to propagate, how to repot, what are the fertilizers needed, and many other things. So friends, please stay tuned. Right, so this particular variety of Cymbidium has a uh, deep burgundy flower. This is one of the earliest to flower. Late autumn, it has already sent out its pikes and it bloomed the whole winter period. So today, uh, this is ready for repotting and for propagation. Uh, take note of this part here. This is where the flowers were uh, and they have fallen off already. So. I think I can manage to divide this into three parts. We have one here, one there, one there, but then I think I'll, I'll just divide this into two now because as a rule of thumb, uh, each division should have at least two pseudo bulbs. By the way, you call these pseudo bulbs. These are not actually bulbs, but these are the ones that you separate uh, to create a new plant. And uh, this particular uh, propagation is called crown division because you divide the plant by its uh, crown. The crown is the transition uh, between the shoots and the roots. So we'll try to uh, remove the whole plant from its container. I have actually loosened this already yesterday. So it's just easy to pull this up. Okay, so there you are. Now you will note that the plant is already root bound. That means the roots are circulating around this ball of soil and the growth is restricted by uh, the sides of pots. So what we're going to do at this stage is to try to uh, loosen up uh, this ball of soil uh, so that the roots will not be entangled. And then I would also remove some of the dead roots. You can tell dead roots because they are light and hollow and uh, are no longer looking healthy enough. So using this uh, weeder, they call it super weeder, we can also use this to disentangle the roots from this ball of soil. So all you need to do is just uh, loosen it up, uh, gently uh, tease up the roots, okay. particularly this part above. So repotting of Zimbidium is a must because there will come a time when all you have are dead roots that will uh, affect the growth and development and the flower production of your cymbidium. But at the same time, when you repot, it will be an opportunity for you to uh, divide your plants so that you will come up with not just one plant, but two or three more. So uh, this is, I'll just loosen up the soil and and then we we'll proceed with the uh, division of uh, this crown into two parts. Right, so I have uh, removed most of the uh, dead roots here. I'm now ready to uh, divide the whole clump you know, into two parts. Uh, by the way, I need to also remove uh, these once flower spikes. Now. There are two of them. Okay. Okay, now I need a, uh, a knife 
to cut through the uh, uh, the shadow bulbs one and okay so right so I have uh, two plants here which are ready for uh, repotting okay so I'll just put this here for now and the next thing to consider is uh, what potting mix to use uh, I just used this uh, orchid potting mix it is composed of uh, fine and coarse composted pine bark from uh, which is a byproduct of the timber industry here in New Zealand. So here you can see bits and pieces of pine bark in different sizes. But uh, added to this are controlled release fertilizer. It is good for three to four months. And some lime additives to make sure the pH of the medium is balanced. Well, uh, if pine bark is not available in your locality, for example, in the Philippines, I'm sure there are good substitutes for each one. Well, like for example, a finely chopped coconut husk, maybe with a bit of pumice in it. And for as long as you are able to add the necessary fertilizers to the medium, it should be all right. So I'll put this in the container for now. And then I would need an appropriate um, pot. Uh, this should be uh, big enough for, for the plant. Huh? You need to put the potting mix first. And then uh, I'll put this inside. Okay. And then add the potting mix. And if you have a, a stick like this, uh, to make sure that uh, the roots are in contact with uh, the medium. And there is uh, very minimal uh, air speed spaces inside. Okay. So this is our uh, first plant. Okay, so there you are. I have uh, divided the whole plant and I have uh, two plants now. So all I need to do is take good care of these two plants. So that hopefully uh, next year uh, this will send out new spikes of flower and and then uh, it will bloom the whole uh, winter season right so the next thing to do is to make sure uh, the plants are well watered so i have uh, watered the plants you cannot actually over water the plants uh, by adding too much water at one time because uh, the soil medium is well drained and Excess water can always drain through the holes at the bottom of the pot. But you can overwater when you do it very frequently. So as a rule of thumb, uh, during winter time, you only need to water your plants once a week. But during summer, when it's uh, hotter and drier, uh, you can water the plants twice a week. Right, so I've kept uh, the newly propagated plants inside this porch or veranda there and I believe that this part of the house has just enough sunlight for uh, the cymbidium orchids you see too much light will affect the growth and development of the plant it will scorch the leaves and if there's not enough light flower production will be affected now how can you tell that there is just enough light um, the color of the leaves it should not be lush, dark green, because that indicates that there's not enough light and the plant will not send out flower spike. And if it does, there'll be only a few uh, flowers produced. Okay, that's a closer look of the leaves of the plant, which is uh, yellowish green, which indicates that there's just enough sunlight for these plants. Another thing is temperature. If you keep your plants inside the house, um, temperature can be quite high. The optimum temperature for flower spike production or initiation is 11 degrees centigrade and if the temperature is above 12 degrees centigrade 
the plant will not be able to initiate uh, flower spikes and so there'll be no flowers produced. But as soon as the plant is in full bloom, then that's the time that you can bring it inside the house and it will serve as a very nice house plant. Now the last thing that you need to know is a fertilizer application. Before a flower spike production or during uh, early summer, it will be advisable if you add a nitrogen rich uh, fertilizer and when the flower starts to produce flower spike it will be less of nitrogen and more of potassium all right friends so i hope uh, you have learned something from uh, this video and if you have please give me comments if you have some questions please ask them so i can respond to them and if you haven't subscribed to this channel uh, please do so thank you and have a good day